Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, this is Crystal Ross, and this is Eating the Holy Bible. We stream on Facebook and on YouTube, and I am retooling our last session because um, I wanted it to come through more clear. So I am thanking you so much for joining that live. But um, for the archive, I just want things to be nice and clear so that we have the best ministry available. And so today's song will be a reading rainbow. And it is um, by LeVar Burton, sang by LeVar Burton. So let's get into it. Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Just take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. I can go anywhere. With friends to know and ways to grow, a reading rainbow. I can be anything. Just take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow, a reading rainbow. Wasn't that fun? Thank you so much. Now it is time to get into the word of God. And that is my reason for coming. It's so that we'll read together. And so let's go ahead and get into Judges chapter 8. And the title reads, Gideon kills Zeba and Zamuna. Make sure my do not disturb is on. Good. All right, let's go. We're reading from Judges chapter 8 of the NLT version of the Holy Bible. And I'm reading directly from BibleGateway.com. And it says, Then the people of Ephraim asked Gideon, Why have you treated us this way? Why didn't you send for us when you first went out to fight the Midianites? And they argued heatedly with Gideon. But Gideon replied, What have I accomplished compared to you? Aren't even the leftover grapes of Ephraim's harvest better than the entire crop of my little clan of Abiezer? God gave you the victory over Oreb and Zeb, the commanders of the Midianite army. What have I accomplished compared to that? When the men of Ephraim heard Gideon's answer, their anger subsided. Gideon then crossed the Yoran River with his 300 men and they were exhausted. They continued to chase the army. And when they reached Sukkoth, Gideon asked the leaders of the town, please give my warriors some food. They are very tired. I'm chasing Zeba and Zamuna, the kings of Midian. But the officials of Sukkoth replied, catch Zebeah and Zamuna first and then we will feed your army. So Gideon said, after the Lord gives me victory over Zeba and Zamuna, I will return and tear your flesh with the thorns and briars from the wilderness. Tear your flesh. From there, Gideon went up to Peniel and asked again. And again asked for some food. But he got the same answer. So he said to the people of Peniel, after I return from victory, I will tear down this tower. This tower. By this time, Zeba and Zamuna were in Karkor with about 15,000 warriors, all that remained of the allied armies of the east. Remember, they all came together to fight the Israelites. For 120,000 120, had already been killed. Gideon circled round about, circled around by the caravan, caravan route east of Noba and Yog Beha. Taking the Midianite army by surprise, Zeba and Zamuna, the two Midianite kings, fled, but Gideon chased them down and captured all of their warriors. After this, Gideon returned from the battle by way of Heres Pass. There he captured a young man from Sukkoth and demanded that he write down the names of all the 70 officials and elders in the town. Gideon then returned to Sukkoth and said to the leaders, here are Zeba and Zamuna. When we were here before, you taunted me, saying, catch Zeba and Zamuna first, and then we'll feed your exhausted army. Then Gideon, excuse me, then Gideon took the elders of the town and taught them a lesson, punishing them with thorns and briars from the wilderness. Sound like he beat their behind. He also tore down the tower of Peniel and killed all the men in the town. Then Gideon asked Zeba and Zamuna, the men you killed at Tabor, 
What were they like? Like you, they replied. They all had the look of a king's son. They were my they were my brothers, the son of my own mother, Gideon exclaimed. As surely as the Lord lives, I wouldn't kill you if I hadn't if I hadn't killed them. Turning to Jather, his oldest son, he said, kill them. But Jather didn't draw his son, his sword, for he was only a boy. He was afraid. Then Zeba and Zamuna said to Gideon, be a man, kill us yourself. So Gideon killed them both. He took the royal ornaments from off and took the royal ornaments from the necks of their camels. All right. Let's go to... Okay, if I hadn't killed them, I'm trying to see. Let's move on. I want to return there. Gideon's, Gideon's sacred aphod, aphod. Then the Israelites said to Gideon, be our ruler. You and your son and your grandson will be our rulers, for you have rescued us from Midian. But Gideon replied, I will not rule over you, nor will my son. The Lord will rule over you. However, I do have one I do have one request, that each of you give me an earring from the plunder you collected from your fallen enemies, the enemies being the Ishmaelites, all wore gold earrings. Gladly, they replied, they spread out a cloak and one threw, and each one threw in a golden earring that he had gathered from the plunder. The weight of the golden earrings was 43 pounds, not including the royal ornaments, pendants, and purple clothing worn by the kings of Midian, or the chains around the necks of their camels. So everything they've taken from the Midianites, they threw it in onto the cloak. Gideon made a sacred aphod, aphod from the gold and put it in Ophrah, his hometown. But soon all the Israelites prostituted, prostituted themselves by worshiping it. And it became a trap for Gideon and his family. That is a story of how the people of Israel defeated Midian, which never recovered. Throughout the rest of Gideon's lifetime, about 40 years there was a place, there was peace, excuse me, in the land. Then Gideon, son of Yoash, returned home. He had 70 sons born to him, for he had many wives. He also had a concubine in Shechem, who had given birth to a son, whom he named Abimelech. Gideon died when he was very old, and he was buried in the grave of his father, Yoash, at Ophrah, in the land of the clan of Abiezer. As soon as Gideon died, the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshiping the images of Baal, making Baal bury their God. They forgot the Lord, their God, who had rescued them from all of their enemies surrounding them. Nor did they show any loyalty to the family of Yerubal, that is Gideon, despite all of the good that he had done for Israel. And that does include the reading of scripture. It's time for our commentation and some relation portion. And what I want to get into is that, once again, after all that they've been through, they turned on God yet again. And so the very reason why Gideon was summoned was because they were calling upon the Lord's name for help from the surrounding, from their neighbors, their enemies. Um, the ones they've taken land from, okay, so they began to pirate their stuff and they didn't have any food left. They took everything. They weren't just taking clothes. They weren't, they, they, no, no. What they took, what they took was, I'll tell you what they actually took was the field, the plants, and they took their livestock. They had nothing to eat. They had to call upon the Lord. Um, how did they get there in the first place? They started worshiping Baal. And had a, um, a share of home. They were acting like the people who were their neighbors. They turned on God, the one who brought them up out of Egypt, up out of slavery, had been with them all the way, helped them defeat all of these armies. And he said, once you get to the promised land, which is where they are, don't forget about me, which is what they did. And God said, fine, if you forget about me, I'm going to draw my hand and you will starve. And that is what happened. So now that they're starving, they call upon him. And then, listen, Gideon, the ruler that God had given them, he ruled over them for 40 years. He dies and they go back to the same behavior. So as of tomorrow, we're going to find out what happens to these people. I'm very interested to know. So um going to have to come up with a quote for our uh, summary um, for um, the lesson. And then we'll... Um, go on to prayer. So I would say 
Um, I think that would be, oh, I think now what was repetitive in the lesson was if you don't help me, I'll punish you. When I ask for help, help me. Otherwise, when I am victorious, I'll, I will punish you. I could use that. All right. So when when I when I at when we ask for help, please be of aid and service. Please make yourselves ready and available for service so for the Lord to use you. Otherwise, may his hand uh, not be slack. In, your pun- in, in, in punishing you for your disobedience. I think I like that. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and close in prayer. Lord, I thank you so much for the gathering of students on this day. Lord, asking that today is a productive day, that we get everything accomplished that we are set forward to do. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Watch over the people, oh, your people and keep us safe. In the mighty name of Jesus, um, defeat our enemies and keep us enclosed, Father. Um, We're praying and asking for forgiveness for all of our sins, shortcomings. And Lord, please help us, Lord, um, to to live righteously and according to um, your calling upon our lives. Christ, I'm praying we thank you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, and I'll see you guys on tomorrow. Be blessed. Bye.